Yes, so hello guys, welcome back to another edition of Sports Update Ghana. And in this episode, we'll be having a conversation with three sports journalists in Ghana and find out from them if Ghanaian striker Jordan Ayu should be included in the Black Star squad for the games against Nigeria in the 2022 FIFA World Cup playoffs. Well, I'll see you if today is your first time here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like, share, and don't forget to leave a comment. So quickly, let's get into the conversation. Gentlemen, you are welcome to Sports Update Ghana and this is the first time I'm doing something like this, getting sports journalists over here so that we talk about sports and everything. So you're welcome on board. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay, so let me begin with you, Selassie. Um, the issue for discussion today is about Jordan Ayu, people asking whether he deserves a call-up in the Black Stars and looking at Jordan Ayu, in the last uh, couple of games, he has failed to score. Um, he has played 73 matches for the Black Stars since his debut, uh, I think, in 2010, and has scored 18 goals. What do you think? Should Jordan Ayu be called in um, Otto Ado's squad for the game? Because I know people say he should be dropped. I think, yes, he should be called out, but he should start from the bench he should start from the bench. I don't have a problem with Jordan in the squad. There are many elements to his game than just goal scoring. And I think um, him starting from the bench will do him a world of good than starti- starting from the, uh, from the first 11. Um, Jordan has struggled in the Ghana Black Stars team, not only due to him, but because the Black Stars team struggles to create chances for the strikers to finish off. Jordan has been tried in a variety of positions. Many people say he's hardworking. He provides from the wings better. He does more than just call goals. But I am maybe old-fashioned. I think my strikers or players who are named the striking position should be scoring goals. And if they are not doing that, they are not doing their job. Jordan should start from the bench. And I think that will be best for the Black Stars. That's what I think. Oregu, what are your thoughts? Should Jordan Ayu be included in the Blaster squad for the game against Nigeria? Well, I think for, for a game of such magnitude, you, you need your best players and your most experienced players. And so, I mean, I'd expect him to be part of the squad. Uh, if he's not, that's like minimum requirement, I think. If he's not part of the squad, I would be, I'd be quite surprised. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all down to the technical team. But from where I sit, I, I think... You know, national team, I always say, is, is very, very different from club level. Uh, that's why you usually see, you know, national team coaches take Spain and England, for instance. They may have players performing outside the team, but they usually struggle to get into the national team. Case in point, you look at Spain uh, during the Euros, Luis Enrique decided to go with the Madrid players, and he had a lot of backlash. Uh, but at the end of the day, the players that he had have justified why they, they were there and they went on to even reach, uh, you know, the Nations League final. Uh, you look at England too, for instance, and you see a certain a certain core of players always being called and you wonder, these guys don't even play for their clubs, they're not in their best of form, but they always make the national team. And that's because we have to consider a lot of factors in national team football. It's not... It's not, you know, uh, an avenue for coaches to now explain stuff and drill their, their philosophy and tactical, you know, instructions into the players. They usually want to pick players who fit into their style. And so if I'm playing a five-back system and I have a right-back who offers more in a th- um, attack uh, and then also is good defensively, but we have a right-back who is very consistent for us that coach could possibly go for the player who offers more in attack. And so at the end of the day, I think it's down to what the coach wants, what he expects from his players. And so a lot of Ghanaians have to rearrange their mind in terms of that and understand that the new technical team coming will probably have their core of players because of what they want to achieve. And so if player A is called because ahead of player B, it doesn't necessarily mean that player A is better than player B. And so on that note, for me, I think, yeah, Jordan, he's a great player. We've seen what he's done with the Black Stars and all that. But this is a case where he's been in the national team for a very, very long time. And uh, I, I think we've seen past his peak. 
His peak was probably during 2012, 2013, uh, 2015, where he was really offering a lot of funds. I don't think you will ever see a more prolific Jordan than we're seeing. We've seen him being played on the wings, and can he do that job for the Black Stars? Yes, he can. But in terms of pure wing play, is he part of our top two wingers at the moment? Unfortunately, I don't think so. Maybe his case might be better because his brother Andrea Yu isn't around and Kamal Dean would most likely not be in the squad. And so he would maybe get a shot here as a winger. But I think long term, uh, either he finds himself as a striker and starts scoring goals because I, I don't think that he is part of our best players when everyone is fit. And so, yeah, I think he should be called for this Nigeria game uh, if he's going to play as a winger. But then long term, we would have to start looking beyond them. And also there's a case of, you know, these players starting to feel entitled to the team. That's something that we have to get rid of. And, you know, if they're not having a good game, they should be subbed off. They are not, they are not demigods in the team. And that's the, the feeling that a lot of Ghanaians had in the Africa Cup of Nations. And so, yeah, I would expect to see him. But if he's playing a bit part role, that, that would definitely be good, uh, at least for the experience that he has in this club. Okay, so gentlemen, we've been joined by Herbert Boachi Adam. He's with Ghana Soccer Net. He's also with um, Happy FM in Accra. Herbert, um, we are talking about Jordan IU, and we saw in the newspapers yesterday in graphics post that a former Black Stars player said that uh, Coach Otoado should be bold enough to drop striker that is Jordan IU. What do you make of uh, the assertions of? Frimpong, um, Mr. Frimpong, that's the coach of Asokwa Deportivo. Jordan, are you? Jordan, are you? Okay, so let's start with some stats. Uh, in 2022, Jordan has made three appearances for the Black Stars. He's without a goal and assist. And personally, I haven't been impressed with his performance in the national team. I was in Cameroon to watch uh, the Black Stars and that uh, disaster, that shameful exit. From the tournament, I'm still. Should I say I'm still trying to get over whatever happened in Cameroon? But let's talk about Jordan Ayew. Yes, he has to be named in the squad for the game against Nigeria. But personally, I don't think he should be among the starting eleven. You cannot doubt Jordan Ayew because of what he's done with the national team in the past, with his experience, and he's been one of the senior players in the team. You know, he's been, he's been around for a while. And going into this game, you need players like that who, when they appear in the squad, would sort of give some sort of uh, fear to the opposing team. If I am Otoado, what we know or what we understand is the coach is trying to bring in players who are playing actively at their club side. Yes, Jordan uh, is in action. He has been playing week in week out for Crystal Palace. I think yesterday against City, he had to come off the bench to help the team uh, take a point in that big game. But when it comes to the national team, what we see Jordan do with Palace uh, in the Premier League, is that the same thing he does or he replicates when he joins the national team? For me, I would say no. Every time Jordan is fused into the squad and always I feel that he's taking the shine and opportunity from other young players who, when given opportunity, can do better than him. Yes, we are going into the quali- into a qualifier whereby we want to what make or pick a slot in the World Cup in November. And clearly, with what Jordan has shown us in a previous year or two when it comes to the Black Stars, clearly, I don't think that if I'm a coach, I will put him in my starting lineup or I'll start him because he has failed to lead Liva as a striker. We are expecting Jordan and you to take over from Asam Wajan, but... After that, after his impressive performance at the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations, I think uh, that was a period whereby he played his best uh, games for the Black Stars. I think since that, since that time, to 2022, Jordan, that we've always given, given up that we are hoping he will live up to the hype, hasn't. And we are going into a game that we need players who are scoring. And this is a player who hasn't scored in two years for the Black Stars. So clearly, I would agree with... Uh, Whoever made that comment, yes, we need him in a team, but yes, Otoado has to be bold enough not to start him. Yes, I heard Oweku saying that some players feel as if the Black Stars is for them. That they think uh, they are entitled to a position in the starting lineup. We need to change that, that narrative. 
when I was in Cameroon, anytime the black stars starting line comes up and you go to social media, what do you hear from what do you hear from Ghanaians saying that they're starting on Jordan and you? Jordan and you and his brother always find themselves, or they always manage to find a way into the starting eleven. People don't trust our head coaches making those decisions because clearly it's a, if a player is not performing, what do you expect from a striker? What do you expect from an attacker? To whether to either towards assist or to score, but especially Jordan Ayew has been doing has not been doing what he's supposed to be, to do on the field. He has not been doing it consistently. So I feel that heading into this game against uh, Nigeria, that's on the 25th and the 29th. Clearly, let's give other players the opportunity. Let him study. Let him what? Let him come off the, from the bench. Clearly, this is what I will vouch. This is what I will push for. Jordan Ayew, I think it is time for him to what? sit and then allow other other youngsters or other chaps. You see, what is worrying is that the the list for the game hasn't been released. The squad is not out yet. So we can't even tell or we don't know which players are making the squad so that you can even make a case that if this attacker is coming, I would prefer that this attacker will start ahead of Jordan Liu. Then we can make the start at club level. He's playing, he's scoring. Because, this, this, because going into this game, we need strikers who can put the ball into the back of the net or attackers who can put the ball into the back of the net. So I would agree if Jordan is, uh, has to start from the bench against Nigeria. Okay, okay. So, um, Selassie, let me continue with you. Um, in terms of confidence, will you say Jordan Ayu has lost his confidence level? Sometimes um, you watch Jordan Ayu and you feel like this guy has lost his Confident, the way he plays the football does not assume any uh, thing that shows that he's confident on the ball. Do you think the son of the maestro has lost it all when it comes to confidence level on the pitch? Uh, if you are not scoring goals, naturally you feel down. That's your job to find the back of the net, to provide an assist, to do all those things. If you are not doing it, naturally you would feel that you are not doing your job and the confidence level will naturally go down. So, yes, probably the confidence and the criticism coming in, but he should, that's why I, I said at the beginning that he should be starting from the bench. That would do him a world of good. Getting away from the spotlight and the criticism would do him some, some good because he needs to go back, refresh, and come back as the player we knew him to be at his, at his he hey days when he was providing assists and scoring for the Black Stars. I think when you go that long without scoring for your national team, especially, it affects your play. It affects how you influence games. And probably in the long term, you might not be performing as you should. So that's why I'm of the opinion that he should start from the bench. It will do him a world of good. Yeah. All right, we also said that he should start from the bench. And when uh, possibly he's being given the starting role and he's not performing, he shouldn't be seen as a demigod, but he should be subbed. Why do you make this point? Uh, because uh, Jordan Ayu, for me, I think, although he has lost his confidence, sometimes his contribution in the game is very useful. Sometimes he gets you the free kicks in the areas that you want and all that. Yeah, and I, I, it's, it's, not, it's not as straightforward as saying he should, he should be benched. I mean... I, I don't think he should be benched. I think he should get some day play time, maybe a significant amount. But if it's not his day, we don't need to force it. He's not a Messi or Ronaldo who would pop up with some magic, get into the end of the game. It's obvious we can see Jordan is not having a good day. And I wouldn't. that's one thing I want the new technical team to, to pick up from um, Milo, Milo van Rijnbach, that Milo would just see things go and expect things to change magically. I expect him to be more proactive from the touchline against Nigeria because... This, this is a very crucial game. But the reason I'm saying, you know, it's not straightforward when it comes to benching Jordan is you look beyond Jordan and what striking options do the Black Stars really have? Yeah. I mean, the, the list hasn't been released, but off the top of my head, I can maybe think of if Afenajan decides to come. I, even if he comes, I don't think he's ready to start a match yet. I still think he's still in a grooming period where Roma have robbed him and cut him and woo, and really want to ensure that they get it right in terms of the development. So it's not, it's not been, you know, he's not playing week in, week out. He's getting minutes, experiencing the game more because he didn't really have academy football and he didn't really go through the right processes 
of learning how to play football. And so it's almost like he's now being taught uh, how to play in simulation using real matches. And so it, it, it wouldn't be f- so fast uh, in terms of his development. So I don't think he's ready to start for the national team. Maybe he can also get some few minutes and experience here and there. But apart from him, there's uh, Boachi Adam. Boachi Adam, I think he's a bit on and off. I don't think he has the qualities that we need to become Ghana's consistent number. And I think his best days are behind him, actually. But he's also a good squad player who can make a difference if he comes on. Benjamin Tete is suspended. And apart from that, I mean, uh, anyone else can jump in. Who, who am I missing out on? Is there any other striker who you think should be starting? For me, I'm thinking maybe Joseph Eso should be given the chance, considering that he has scored two goals in two weeks. Well, we all know that this kind of players don't get into the Black Stars Collar, but um, thinking that we might get a surprise. But when it comes to, to the striking rule, we all know that we are facing difficulties as a country. We don't have enough strikers. But then again, you ask yourself, is Jordan the solution? Don't you have other options? We come down to our maybe we have to do a lot more scouting because if we are ending up with an option that we all know that we don't really want, but it's almost like a life situation where like you don't really have any other option. Have like, a you take it like that. Yeah. yeah. It's like half a loaf. You're, hung, you're hungry, but right? you don't have money to buy food. Yeah. So you just take anything anyone gives you. And right. that's where I think Ghana, Ghana is stuck right now that we should have a striker that as, as you know, people, we are confident in it. We can say that, ah, you Nigerian should because Jordan is going to get a hat-trick against you. I don't think any Ghanaian can quote these words pre-game. And it, it's, it's worrying. And maybe we, we can hope that Bernard Lippe works another magic in terms of getting us another Kofi or Jiku or someone from a draw nationality or something uh, to slot in and, you know, solve our striking problem. But I think maybe the next step is what look locally. But for me... Once again, I don't think there's any striker on the local scene consistent enough to play for the Black Stars. Oh, okay. Uh, we are running. Um, the time is fast going. I thought we could de- do this in eight minutes. Uh, let me give the last one to Herbert. Herbert, um, what do you think? Don't you have any other options aside Jordan Ayew? We look at a player like Antoine Semenyon. He's been doing so well in the championship and is being considered for the Black Stars. Uh, you have your namesake, Richmond Boachiadom, over there as well. When it comes to the striking, it's very difficult. Nigeria has named nine strikers, and we are struggling to name strikers as Ghanaians. Ebert, don't you have any other options apart from Jordan Ayu? Okay, so let, let me share this exclusive with you. I think Richmond Boachiadom is not making the squad. As for that one, I can put it on record. Uh, so, we, Benjamin Teta is out. Uh... So now we just have to stick with Jordan Ayu. Andrew Ayu is also not coming because of yeah. the suspension. So for the attacking, from the attack for the Black Stars, I think it's going to be a major problem for us. I think what the coach has to do is maybe whether if you have to play, I'm not a coach, but they have this at a force nine. Whether if you can get somebody to uh, to be in that position for us in the Black Stars. You see, Jordan Ayu, Jordan Ayu has always, as I said, we're expecting him to leave up to the height. We're expecting him to take over from Asimwajan. But it's been a number of games that he hasn't what? He hasn't been or he hasn't proven to be the striker that the Black Stars needs. And clearly, you will see somebody that we can't rely on him heading into this crucial game against Nigeria. Look at when uh, Austin Iguavon was released his 25-man squad for the, uh, for, for the, for the double header. Look at the attacking threat of the Nigerian team, all the Super Eagles team. All these players playing so well with their clubs. Now we have Jordan Ayu. Would Ghanaians or would you or would the four of us on this, on this uh, meeting right now agree that Jordan Ayu can really lead the Black Stars in this game? I would say no. And I don't know what you think. But Antoine Semenyon, yes, we've heard that, yeah, of course, that maybe he might join the squad for this, for this game. But ask yourself, playing in the English Championship, there's an African game. We saw players, look at Mohamed Salah. When he, when he came to the African Cup of Ages, we all saw his performance, do you understand? There's a player that will be making his debut 
in a very high profile game. There's a World Cup decider. Would you bank up your hopes on a player who is making a debut in such a game? He hasn't witnessed this game before. He hasn't played this game before. He hasn't played uh, here. He hasn't, he hasn't played whether, whether it's going to be at the Cape Coast or Barbara Sports Stadium. So it's a new terrain for him. So me, I'm not going to be banking up my hopes on a youngster like that. Yeah, he's a good player. He's shown his qualities. He has the English Championship. It's a very tough league. But there's the Black Stars. There's a the national team. This is Africa. There's a new terrain. So it's Antoine Simeon. Yes, it's a 50-50. It might work or it might not. But then it comes to Jordan Ayu. Will the fans be what? Have that confidence because even when a player is not performing and the fans are backing him, there you know that yes, even when he goes into the game, when he knows that we are when, when he knows that he's on the field, he has the backing of the fans. But clearly, we know that Jordan is no longer a fan's favorite. So going into this game, really, Otohado, yes, I don't know why they have not, they've decided not to release the list. But I'm hoping that they are working behind the clock to get somebody who is competent enough to fill in the big shoes of Andre Ayu. Because currently now in Europe, he's the what? He's the uh, top scoring Ghanaian player in abroad. Let me put it that way. You understand? Who, 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 who else would be able to fit in that big shoes? Because even at the Af- African Cup of Nations, it had to take what Andre Ayu and Bocciarum to get us the goals. And these two players are not coming in. So clearly we have attacking, we are in attacking crisis right now. We have a very big problem when it comes to what the, the attacking you. Look at uh, Samuel Abikwe. Yeah, Samuel, yeah. is it Maxwell. is it is it Samuel, right? Maxwell. Or is it Maxwell? Maxwell. Yeah. Is it Maxwell? Yes. After his after the African African Cup of Nations. He hasn't been himself. You talk of David Abagna Sandan, who is he's injured. So even in the local scene, the next person closest to the top scoring, uh, to the top scoring in the GPL is Bright, a J of of Indiana Stars. Are you going to count? Are you going to count him in, in the squad for the Afon qualifier for the World Cup playoff? No, I don't think so. So it all boils down to uh, Jordan Ayu. Clearly, looking at the situation we find ourselves. He'll be the best pick, even though I don't want him to start. But with the names that I've listed right now, as well as Antoine Semenya will come, I don't know who they are going to call because when I when I do the monitoring of Ghanaian players abroad in Europe, I don't see so many strikers calling. I would have loved to see Kwabna Usu. Kwabna Usu plays in Ankaraguchu in Turkey, being drafted into the squad because clearly he's a player that we can rely on. Or else, then maybe they have to turn they have, they have to turn their attention to the wingers to provide the goals. But so Jordan, are you with what he has what he has shown us in our previous games? Clearly, I don't think he'll be the man to put the ball at the back of the net. So he'll be the man that we can all put our hopes in towards banking the goals for us. So uh, Joseph, I would say that we are really in big trouble. And then I'm hoping that with the squad delay, the reason why they've delayed the squad, they are. Maybe there will be, be surprises for us. I am just hoping because clearly we are really in trouble when it comes to our attacking what our, our attacking department. Look at Nigeria. Look at the names: Oshiman, Igalo, uh, Nacho. Look at all these players and comparing them to the Black Stars and just comparing them to the Black Stars attacking uh, department. We really have we really have a big uh, problem heading into this coach attack. Well, gentlemen, let me thank you guys for your time. This is the first time I'm doing something like this. I'm really excited that you guys came on board. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. I did this with Selassie Fiawe. He is a YouTuber. The name of his channel is Sarah Football. I had Ori Kwampofu of Joy Sports here, as well as Herbert Boachi Adams, also with Happy FM and Ghana Soccer Gentlemen, thanks for your time. Peace out.